And I don't know if you guys, you know, church are is wonderful and the masses are wonderful, but I really, really love to be a part of a body where they're truly connecting with Holy Spirit and the needs are being met. We can jump and they did an awesome job. We can hoop and we can have guest singers and guest this and guest that and we can have twirlers and dancers and we can have all of that and all of those things are wonderful to entertain us to keep us out of the world. So we can say, well, we had a great time at church. But church is meant to meet the needs of the human body, the human person who come to meet Jesus. I've been teaching on Wednesday night about the life and ministry of Jesus Christ and, and I'm talking about how he conducted himself in the earth realm. And for the last two Wednesdays, and even this past Wednesday, I was talking about the woman at the well and how she tried to skirt around her mental condition and her, her broken heart and her loneliness and how she needed love. And I said on Wednesday night, everybody needs love. Every one of us in it, we're wired for love. And nothing wrong with you if you want to be loved. You're supposed to want to be loved. And if you are born again believer, then you know if God is your father, it is natural for love because God is love. And if God is love, then he wants you and I to be loved. Everyone needs to be appreciated. Everyone should, not all the time it happens, should be or try to be understood. Everyone should have a sense of approval. And unfortunately, as, as we live in this life, those things don't always come every day or in the manner that we desire it for it to come. But I want you to know today that Jesus can give you that every day. He can give you that love. He can give you that acceptance, that approval. Amen? And he truly, truly understands. But we've got to open up our hearts in our lungs, in our minds, and our emotions, and just say, and that's why I love that song that Nikki and the team was singing, everything else can wait. Yeah. Hallelujah. You've got to get to the place where everything else, though it's important and it's pressing in on you, and they're just time stealers, and they just come to rob and take and take and take. And though we, as I said last Sunday, with the backpack on my back and we get weighted down and we all have our own burdens and situations and circumstances we're dealing with, but how many know that sometimes we have the energy, the emotional energy to deal with those weights, but it's when life happens and other people place demands and more than what we can handle that weigh us down. And that's why the song was so applicable to our situation because everything else can wait but I need you. And I pray as I stand before you and get ready to open the word of God to you and share some scriptures, I pray today that you realize that's who you really need. He can give us him if we really want him. And I pray today that we can detox ourselves off of all of this self-help solutions that we find ourselves in and just come boldly before the throne of grace like he has commanded us and receive do you want to receive I don't want, I want you to just stand up already feel him here he's already here hallelujah you just lift your hands and your heart I, I mean business today. Let's let's act like this is the emergency room. We all have on our sterile gowns, our masks, and our hands are open, and we're saying, "God, fill us." Father, today let this be an extraordinary Sunday. Yes, yes. And that you would minister healing and wholeness to each individual that here. I don't know all of their needs and I don't need to know their needs. But as I said before, God, you meet every need. Father, you're omnipotent. You are all knowing. You're all everywhere at the same time. 
and you see and I'm asking, according to Matthew 7, 7, you said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find and knock and the doors will be open. I'm asking God that you would look inside of our hearts and bring healing, God, to our soul. Deliver us from a bitter attitude, a bitter heart, a bad temper, anger, malice, oh God. The things that will crown our hearts and keep your word from producing life. Wash us this morning with the water of the word of God. Cleanse us from the crown of our head. Put your hand on your head. Say, oh God, touch my mind. Touch my emotions, oh God. Go deep. Come on, say, go deep. Go deep, oh God. Touch only those areas that you can touch. Expose and reveal, God, those things that will keep me from your best. From walking in your anointing, walking in your power, walking in your restoration, walking in holiness, oh God. Deliver today, let this be a sermon that will bring deliverance in the house. We plead the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus and I also ask that the angels of God will begin to be true in the angels all around this place guarding as you do surgery on each of us. Open the eyes of our understanding and may it be in light to what you've called us to do. Yes, Father God, I can do none of this apart from you and I'm nothing without you, but you have anointed me for this. Yes. So I'm asking let them see you and not me and feel your power and not just a human touch. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, saints, in Jesus' name. You may be seated in God's presence. Um, as I said, I've just been on this, I've been on this journey for about now, since last year, and, and I didn't see, and I'm so glad that we know in part. Aren't you glad we know in part? I think some of us will be, be like Elijah, and we'll just pick up our skirts and our pant leg, and we'll just start running, and then, if we knew everything that God knows, if we, if we really saw our lives from God's perspective, and I know we like to be super duper spiritual and, and say, oh yes, it's all good, not everything. I said, not everything is good. Oh, I did thank you for the two people who want to agree with I said, not everything. And I'm so glad we can't see what he sees. But I, I guess the, the consolation would be this. He give us this consolation is that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if I can give you hope today, that would be the only thing I can give you hope is that no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter what trials, tribulations, maybe perhaps you're not in a trial. Maybe you're on the mountaintop. And I'm going to tell you, even that requires his sustaining grace to stay on top. Because you have an adversary who's always looking, as Shemika brought out the scripture yesterday, always going about as a roaring lion, seeking to whom he may devour. He's always looking to steal your joy and your peace. Say amen, someone. And then you have to guard your heart. The Bible says uh, to guard our heart with all diligence. Why? Because out of our heart flows what? The issues and the forces of life. And that's what he's after. He's after our heart because he knows in our heart is life. Yes. He knows that in your heart and in my heart, he takes up residence in there. Jesus resides in our heart and there, and there are times because he is so full, he's so magnificent that the enemy is so jealous that he'll try to squeeze in and in, inject his poison in there so there will not be enough room for our Lord in our hearts. Amen, someone. Amen. And so sometimes the, the heart can become encumbered with the weight of things that we're going through. And, and not a lot of people may uh, tackle this or even want to tackle it on a, on a Sunday morning because people sometimes come, just make me feel good, tell me how much you love me, and send me on my way. But I just want you to know that that will only be a band-aid. It will never go after the root cause. And so I'm willing to take a chance this morning 
and use this platform to bring healing and wholeness. Because God never gives up on us. We give up on each other. And let me tell you why we give up on each other from time to time. It's because sometimes what you're going through is just too heavy for a human being to even carry it. I don't think people intentionally walk away from you, but they walk away from you when they feel um, that they can't, con they can't handle it or they don't have the answer, they don't have the solution. So sometimes it's best just to do nothing. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. Sometimes it's just best to do nothing and, and then it, that can be misconstrued as nobody cares, nobody loves me, nobody's concerned about me. That isn't the truth. It's when you're presenting something that only God can meet and you're looking for a human being to do it. That's when the human being or the, the person comes to the end of their rope and realizes I am limited in what I can do for you. But I want to present to you this morning that Jesus Christ is never limited. Amen. That he has the power to heal. And I've asked and you have asked that he would be right here today. Yes. Demonstrating the power to heal the human emotion. Amen. Every human being. Amen. Amen. 